got a question I'd like to ask you tonight. Just a very simple question. We're going to go into some scripture here in a minute. When to say yes and how to say no. Did you ever think about that? God is so. Uh, in my lifetime, God has been good to me. He's allowed me sometimes to go places I shouldn't have went, probably. And I want to deal with some things tonight. And I think every Christian today that really calls himself a Christian knows this. God sets boundaries in our life. Amen. Amen. Come on. And we think, I, I remember a message Brother Glenn preached not too long ago about the old landmarks not removing those. I look around and in the city of Ironton tonight, uh, as Brother Chris said, they're set, setting up uh, tents and different things for this, whatever they want to call it. Uh, and I call it a devil's day or night. But uh, in the city of Ironton, there is a boundary that goes around the same way here in the Hanging Rock. I mean, there's a boundary that goes around the city. I believe God has placed boundaries in our life. Amen. And sometimes by grace, he's, He allows us sometimes to go past those boundaries. But when we do, Brother Johnny, we get in trouble with God. Uh -huh. Amen. And uh, I was done, doing some study on this today just before church. And uh, I'd like to uh, go to the book of Romans chapter 6. When to say yes and how to say no. Very simple little subject. Tonight. And God has placed boundaries in your life. And, and the Lord, in, in the Old Testament, God set natural boundaries for Israel. Uh -huh. Amen. In the natural, He placed them. And also, in their walk with God, there was things, Brother Johnny, they was allowed to do. And there was things... That they wasn't allowed to do. Uh -huh. Amen. And if they crossed that boundary line under the law. Amen. They was worthy to be taken out of the stone. Yeah. Amen. The day that we're living in today. We're living in grace. Mercy. God's been so merciful to me through the years. And uh, you know. Sometimes we think about that song. That he's brought me from a mighty long way. Amen. I was about 12 or 13 years old. Testified to it here just recently. Amen. When I. When I first uh, went to an altar and prayed, and amen, there was something even at the age of 12 or 13 years old, Brother Glenn, yes. amen, that I know that there was a God, amen, and I know who He was, amen, and I heard uh, different things said by different different preachers, but one night, amen, something clicked in my heart, and I found an altar of prayer, amen, and I thank God that I found that altar. Amen. And we need to keep that altar in our lives. Yes. Amen. But I want you to think about this just for a little bit as we get ready to go into the Word of God tonight. The Lord has set natural boundaries in the land as well as boundaries to walk in life, good and bad. Old Testament. Amen. You find the Moses, amen, leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. Amen. It was into a wilderness. Mm -hmm. Amen. And really, you know, they wandered. The Bible, the Bible says about 40 years in the wilderness. And they just wandered from place to place. Uh -huh. I mean, it didn't seem like there was any boundaries. But God had a, a spiritual boundary. When he told them, I mean, in the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not do this or that, Brother John. It seemed like the children of Israel, every time, you know, God had... Uh, in, anywhere in the Old Testament, whenever God told them to do something, amen, they got, would go contrary, amen, to the word that God placed in their life. Uh -huh. Amen. So, there was not only a natural boundary, but there was a spiritual boundary in their lives. Uh -huh. We need to recognize those boundaries today. Yeah. Amen. One writer in the New Testament also in the Old Testament, amen, said, Do you have eyes to see, and you see not, ears to hear, and you hear not? Mm -hmm. Amen. But Apostle Paul come along, and he tells us, amen, that Israel was only blinded in part. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. They had the ears, 
they had the eyes. Amen. But the blindness came on them because of disobedience. Uh -huh. Amen. Disobedience is going outside. Amen. The boundaries of God. Amen. Disobedience is disobeying the word of God. I mean, we can look into the scripture tonight there in the sixth chapter of the book of Romans and the Bible says this in verse 1. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead in sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. Therefore we are buried with him in baptism and to death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in his likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. I mean, the, uh, Paul, I mean, uh, speaks so boldly, Brother Chris, about sin. I mean, he says, shall we continue in Sin, the grace may abound. The Bible says, God forbid. Amen. Amen. But in the day that we're living in today, back about when I was 13, 12, 13 years ago, 45, 44, 45, 46 years ago, amen, it was preached hard on. Yeah. Praise God. I was listening to Taker Brother Taylor there the other night. He was coming down, so he was bringing salvation, but he was coming down on sin. It hasn't changed people. No. I mean, I think about all the great men of God that was taken off the scene in the 90s. Amen. Uh, the sister was testifying about epilepsy. I know, know the man that I consider the man of God. Amen. That uh, seen many a miracle come through uh, his ministry. Amen. And one night, a little sister that uh, we growed up with, amen, had ep epilepsy. And through the laying on of hands, amen, I guess that's been about... 35 years ago, amen, that ep epilepsy left and it never returned. I mean, but I look at the 90s, the early 80s, and I see these great men of God going off the scene. scene. I see trouble infiltrating the church. Mm -hmm. Brother Glenn, we've all seen it. I mean, you want trouble? Just think about the last 15 or 20 years of the church. Trouble was constantly coming in. And I want you to think tonight, I mean, God has set boundaries in our life. I mean, He's set boundaries in our walk. I mean, He's set boundaries with the way that we live. I mean, and God don't change for any generation. But we're living in a generation, I mean, when things it seems like it's changing so much. And it has changed so much, Brother Glenn. I mean, you think, well, I'm, I'm a lot older than I was back you know, 30 years ago, and I perceive things a lot different today, but the Bible says God's word does not change. Uh -huh. Amen. It's from everlasting to everlasting. He said, though the heavens pass, though heaven and earth pass away, he said, my word will not pass away. Uh -huh. Amen. But Paul, amen, he begins to deal with this subject of sin. Amen. And throughout the book of Romans, he's dealing with the flesh. Amen. And he's dealing with the spirit man. I mean, there is a there is a flesh man and there is a spirit man. Paul, I mean, he begins to talk to this fleshly man. I mean, and he tells the church, he said, if there is sin, I mean, uh, more or less as it was in the children of Israel in the camp or in the body. I mean, that, that's what separates the body of Jesus Christ is when sin infiltrates the body. I mean, I know it's a hard, hard thing to deal with in the day that we're living in because sin is running wild. Amen. Praise God. People don't know what, no longer want to live in holiness, yep. righteousness, and godliness, but they want to live after the, the desires of the flesh. Uh -huh. I mean, I was thinking there a week or two ago, when, a couple of weeks ago, when we was in Michigan and how the, many of folks from Portage, Indiana traveled all those miles. I think it was two or three hours in the sleep, in the snow, just to come and, and work for God in the revival that we was, we was working in there. And God does some things. I believe God's going to do some things here. If you need the Holy Ghost, I mean, the Holy Ghost is for you. I mean, if you don't know God, repentance is still real. That's right. right. Praise God. Yes. Paul said in the book of Acts, he said uh, that God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. I mean, you'll never get the Holy Ghost, I mean, if you're not repentant of your sins. Right. Praise God.
Let's read just a little bit here. Thank you, Brother Mike, for that. Verse 5, it says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing that our old man is crucified with him. We've taken that old man out. We've denied him. Uh-huh. Praise God. We've killed him out. Pray, I don't no longer live. And we're going to get to that scripture here in a few minutes. I no longer live the life that I live. Even as a little child, amen, there, there came a point in my life when I know the truth. Yeah. Uh-huh. Praise God. Some people may be 25 years old before they ever come to that knowledge. Yeah. And I was about 12 or 13 years old when I come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Been in this 44, 45 years, Brother Glenn. Been in the ministry over 28 years, and God has never failed me yet. Yeah. Amen. I love the Lord. I'm not ashamed to say I love the Lord. I, I mean, we go a lot of places, and I know that a lot of people don't feel the Lord. Maybe there might be somebody here today, I mean, that really don't feel the Lord. I mean, and you come to church looking for uh, uh, to feel God. I mean, but if you've got the Holy Ghost, you brought Him with you tonight. I mean, those that don't have the Holy Ghost, it's here for you. I mean, I believe one of the main purposes for this revival, Brother Johnny, is to see those that need the Holy Ghost pray it, pray through the Holy Ghost. I mean, I believe it was Sister Castle. I mean, got the Holy Ghost. I mean, what was it, about a year ago? I mean, I told her as she walked into the door that night, by faith, I said, you're going to get the Holy Ghost tonight. I mean, she got the Holy Ghost. Yes. I mean, and it hasn't failed you yet, has it since? <laughs> it ain't failed me. Praise God. But there is boundaries <laughs> that God has set in our life. If you would tonight, raise your hand if you believe God's a holy God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. If we're serving a holy God, he's got a holy people. Uh-huh. Right. Amen. And you know the children of Israel, God gave them boundaries, not only with the way that they lived, Brother, Brother Glenn, but also with the way they worshiped. Uh-huh. Amen. Today we've got programs and we've got all kinds of things to entertain the people. Amen. But in the Old Testament, when they would pray, when they would worship God, God had certain restrictions on where they was to pray. Yeah. Amen. How they that they was to worship. Mm-hmm. Amen. The children of Israel didn't worship their God. Amen. Like the Philistines. Amen. The children of Israel didn't worship their gods. Amen. When they was really worshiping God. Amen. They didn't worship Him the way the Egyptians worshiped their God. Amen. But when the children of Israel, amen, they they there in one place, amen, when Moses was on the mountain, amen, and they 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 began to build things that they seen in Egypt. Amen. Maybe in Babylon. Amen. In different places in the Old Testament they seen things and they built idols to those gods. But God was wroth with the children of Israel and because of their disobedience we preached the message, amen, not too long ago. Hell hath enlarged her mouth. Amen. And the children of Israel was going down the wrong path. Yes. Praise God. God sent prophets. Uh-huh. Amen. What did they do to the prophets? They stoned the prophets. Yeah. They persecuted the prophets. Amen. But God is still God. Amen. Amen. And God's still going to have a people regardless whether you're going to serve God or not. Amen. But he's placed boundaries for us, amen, where we can walk tonight. We'll just read a little bit more here tonight, amen, and go to another place. It says, verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. Now if Christ... Amen. The Bible is telling us death hath no more dominion over him. And we're going to read just a little bit more. Why does it seem like it's, their sin is constantly resurrected in a lot of people's life? Because they're not truly dated. Mm-hmm. Come on. Praise God. It's all right. Verse 10 says, For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto good. God, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed 
unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God. If you need the Holy Ghost tonight, amen, you repent of your sins, yield yourself to God and God will fill you with the precious Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. I told yeah. somebody down in Georgia here, a little Methodist lady, told you all about it here a while back. Uh, up in her 80s, her and her husband had pastored three different Methodist churches. Amen. And she had sat in this Pentecostal church for over a year. Amen. And I preached to her. Amen. If you will obey the word of God, you'll receive the Holy Ghost. And she said, I want the Holy Ghost more than I want life. Uh -huh. Amen. Because she had read about the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Praise God. When you want it more than life, God will give it. When you obey the word of God. I mean, if you don't got the Holy Ghost tonight, you can have it. Uh -huh. Amen. But there's some boundaries. Yes, Lord. Verse 13 says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Everybody's hollering at grace today. Praise God. Sin a little bit every day. You can't be perfect. Hurt it all, Brother Johnny. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Amen. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey? His servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Uh -huh. Amen. What, what was this doctrine, uh, Brother Chris? Amen. That the world was hearing about. Amen. There on the day of Pentecost. Amen. What kind of doctrine, amen, would make God man or man God? Uh -huh. Amen. There was never a doctrine like this, yep. even though maybe Pharaoh considered himself God. Uh -huh. Amen. But there was never a place in history where the real God of glory, except in Jesus Christ, came here and dwelt among us. Amen. Yes, Jesus. And I believe. With him going to the cross, with him laying his life down, Brother Chris, he set some boundaries for us, the way we should walk. Uh -huh. yeah. Praise God. He told his disciples, he said, Amen. If you can't suffer with me, you're not going to reign with me. People in the world that we live in today, they don't want to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. Right. Right. Amen. Yeah. You know, sometimes I look into the New Testament what we call the New Testament church of today and look at so many things that have changed since the early church was here. Amen. The form of doctrine that was delivered on the day of Pentecost. Amen. You look at the reading of the scriptures leading up to Pentecost. What was it? Ten days before the Pentecost. The Bible speaks about those ten days. Amen. Uh -huh. And how that they had gathered there in Jerusalem. Amen. The Bible says in that, uh, Acts, the first chapter, for the promise of the Father. Amen. They was looking. They was expecting. Amen. They was in fasting. They was in prayer. They was in supplication. The Bible says they was in one accord in one place when suddenly there was a sound from heaven that filled the whole house. Uh -huh. Amen. We need to get into that. Amen. That one accord. Amen. That one place. And let that mind of Christ come inside of us. And let him come in and let him show with us. Amen. I tell you the why I love Jesus Christ so much is because he become a part of my life. Amen. There's something, amen, that's in me. Amen. That I couldn't find in the world, Brother Johnny. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. There's something in me that I can't, couldn't find in the world. Verse 18, being then made free.
free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of our flesh, or your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity, and to iniquity, even so now, listen to what Paul's saying. Even so now yield your member servants to righteousness unto holiness. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't think I have any problem in this church talking about holiness or righteousness or godliness because I know some of the folks I've been around a couple of years now and I know how y'all believe, I know how y'all live. I mean, but I know how, I mean, that many times there's people that they, uh, even when I was young, they dabbled around in the world. Uh -huh. Man, God's, we're, we, we've come too far and we're too close now on the journey, Brother Johnny. Right. Amen. To be playing around on God. Right. Uh -huh. Praise God. Let's turn just for a minute. Amen. To Galatians chapter 2. I'm going to try not to be up here too long tonight. Give opportunity if anybody wants to pray, seek for the Holy Ghost. But you have plenty of time. If you want to stay all night, I'll stay right here with you. Amen. <coughs> Praise God. And I believe that's what revival is about, Brother John. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Praise God. Galatians chapter 2. We get down to verse 18. Praise the Lord. It says, For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Think about that. Think just for a minute about these scriptures. I mean, the Bible says the ways of a transgressor are hard. Yeah. If you want, you want relief from the problems that you're having tonight, live like God wants you to live. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. When I said there earlier, when to say yes and how to say no. When you hear the Lord speak, say yes. Take the word of God and you can tell the devil no. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let's read just a minute. It says... For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. I just wonder how many of our testimonies can really say today, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, can't come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I mean, I believe with all my heart that the Old Testament is our schoolmaster. It was is what brings us to Christ. I mean, in that spirit, that Holy Ghost that God gives us when He places it inside of us, it will it will contain itself in the Word, and it will come alive in you, and it will tell you how you got to present yourself before God. Amen, hey, Brother Glenn. I think the last time I see brought that scripture out there, he didn't get very far into it, but the 12th chapter of the book of Romans, Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh -huh. God didn't make it so hard as you can't do it. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Praise God. I have people all the time telling I just can't do that for the kingdom. God made it so easy. Yeah. He made it so plain, the Bible says that a fool could never read. That's it. That's it. Amen. Yeah. Why do we have such a problem for somebody here that's having trouble? I'm talking about sin trouble. Amen. I'm talking about you in and you're out, you in and you out, you in and you out. Sounds like a Chinese proverb. Amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, I grew up in church and I watched. I watch children come and I watch children go. I watch men come, men go. I watch women come and go. When they baptized my da dad, amen, some years before we met Sister Birch. But Sister Birch, uh, I, I believe uh, my dad was alive then. But out of 18 people that Brother Porter baptized that night, he was the only one that stayed. A lot of them went back into the world and a lot of them, there were several of them went back into the Trinity. 
I, I told this down in, in North Carolina. I said, well, it's like the song that they sang, uh, you know, you got your hand on the gospel plow, it wouldn't take nothing from a journey now, but you can't look back, can you? That's right. You never look back. It set a great example in my life. And we had elders, Brother Johnny, that set great examples. They never look back. I was listening to Brother Taylor in that message. I don't know which message it was, but he was talking about that he never turned back. He never looked back. That's what we got to do today. Well, we got to set our we got to set our affections on things that are above. Uh -huh. I preached a message here a while back. Set your affections on things that are above. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not on these natural things that's going to fade away. Brother Pope. Amen. So many times we, you know, I've, I've been to the place. I, I wanted a new car. How long was it due? Not very long. It started waxing old. This body that we live in, Brother Don, same way. Mm -hmm. Starting to feel the pains of age. Amen. But I believe this. And you may think I'm strange when I say this. But you got to understand it. Amen. I believe I'll never die. This spirit man will never die. Uh -huh. Praise God. See, a lot of times when you say that, people think, well, that flesh is, is going to end up going back to the earth. Yes, sir, but this spirit man, the spirit, the man that lives inside of me, he's going to live forever, amen. throughout eternity. Uh -huh. Amen. He's either going to live in a place, amen, of everlasting torment, or he's going to live in a place of everlasting content. Amen. Where everything is good. Amen. Everything that we read about, we're preaching about it here. Amen. The book of Revelation, everything that's good is going to be in that city, but everything that's bad is going to be on the outside, looking in. But those on the inside won't be able to see on the outside because God has set some boundaries. Yes, yes. Praise God. I thank the Lord tonight for those boundaries that He's gave us. Amen. I believe there's a boundary in salvation. Amen. We can't go outside the plan. Amen. That Peter laid down on the uh, day of Pentecost. I believe it's the same. We go outside that boundary. Amen. We, we can become like Paul said, accursed. I mean, he said, though we or an angel come preaching any other gospel, yeah, let him be accursed. Uh -huh. Amen. And I tell you what, some people may receive things, think they're receiving things from angels or from men, but I'll go with the Word of God. Uh -huh. Amen. The Word of God will not fail me. Amen. I believe with I believe we're living in a day we don't have the old preachers like we used to have that would take you into the Word of God and prove to you salvation. They would prove to you what holiness really was. Praise God. We've got a lot of preachers today. They just want to tickle your ears and get your billfold open. Amen. 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 But we need to get back to the old path. We need to stay in the boundaries that God has given us. Yes. Amen. One of the things, amen, there in the Old Testament, that I just want to say this before we turn this over to Brother Glenn tonight. One of the boundaries that God set for the church, amen, I'm talking about the children of Israel. And when they was in a foreign land, Wherever they was at, they was to look towards Jerusalem. Uh -huh. A place. Amen. House of the Lord. House of the Lord. Yes. Amen. There in the book of Exodus. Amen. God, where they built the altar. God recorded his name there at that altar. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I believe God has recorded his name in the church. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, but it, we look all around us where do we see his name. We go out here in the world, where do we see his name? I mean, you can't find his name. We, we hear about a lot of different Jesuses, don't we? Uh -huh. I mean, there's a lot of different Jesuses being worshipped in a lot of synagogues across yeah. this country. But uh -huh. there's only one Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Amen. Paul was very precise on the scriptures. Amen. And he didn't know anything except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. There's a lot of Jesus is being preached today. Amen. Some will preach Jesus and they don't believe in holiness. Some will preach this Jesus and that Jesus. But there's the same Jesus. Amen. That Paul preached the same Jesus. Amen. That Peter preached is the same Jesus Christ that we have to preach today. For in him we have life. We have hope. Amen. We have our salvation. Salvation. We have everything that pertains to life. It's in Him. Amen. Amen. Brother Porter used to sing a song. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. The fullness of the Godhead is all in Him. He's everything that I need. He's 
everything that I want. Amen. And this uh, one writer was explaining the Godhead and says, We are complete in Him. Uh, Amen. I have yeah. completion in Him. Yeah. I have my perfection in Him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If I stay in the boundaries. That's it. That's right. Praise God. If I stay in the boundaries tonight. Amen. Stay in the boundaries, church. Amen. Stay in the boundaries. Amen. I want to go over to chapter 4 just for a minute. Galatians chapter 4. Amen. We'll start reading verse 1. It says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that he, we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Thank the Lord that spirit is inside the children of God, the sons of God. Many times you've heard me preach, I mean, if we're the sons of God, we ought to be manifesting the things of our God. Amen. I love the Lord tonight. Amen. amen. But this revival, amen, we need to be revived in the Word of God, Brother uh -huh. Johnny. Amen. We need to be revived in the Spirit. Amen. We need a revival in our hearts. Amen. 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 I need a revival. Brother Johnny said he needed a revival. I need a revival in my heart. I was listening to a man that went, had went around the world and died in 1997. Amen. Had crusades all over the foreign fields. Amen. And uh, I, I was listening to him this morning. And he said, you know, a lot of ministers, amen, they'll run. Amen. They never stop running to go preach someplace. Amen. But once in a while, you've got to stop. Amen. And you've got to talk to God. Amen. amen. Sometimes Brother Jim's got to stop. Amen. And he's got to take time for God. You say, well, Brother Jim, you're out here preaching on the field and everything like that. But sometimes we got to steal away in prayer. Amen. Sometimes we got to steal away and, and find the Lord. Amen. See what the will of God is. Where He wants us to go. The song says, if it's the forward battlefield where I finally meet my will, then Lord, that's where I want to be. Amen. If it's on the ship, it's about to sink. We're in a desert without water. Whatever the will of... How many can really say tonight, Lord, you sent me where you want, want me to go and I'll go. Yes, Jesus. It's a hard saying. But you know, if you can't go where he wants you to go, are you really the servant of God? Think about it so much, Brother Lydia. Think about it so much. I want to read this again. Chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Can you say you're crucified with Christ? Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Uh -huh. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Ain't you so glad he's done that? Uh -huh. He paid, paid a debt I could not pay. Mm -hmm. Amen. Lord loves you tonight. I don't know what the, what the time's getting to be or anything like that. But if you're in the house tonight and you need the Lord, amen. You know, you're know you the only one knows really if you don't, really need the Lord or not. Amen. You're the only one who really knows where you're living with God. That's it. Amen. We can make observances and think one thing or another, but only you know your heart. Yeah. God knows your heart. Yeah. Amen. And if you need the Holy Ghost, if you need to repent tonight, we're going to open the altars up tonight. I hope tonight there's been something said. Amen. To let, kind of see if you're in the boundaries that God has yes, placed Lord. on your life. Yes, Jesus.